We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Ka- Dinner time! I- <laughs> Check! <laughs> Let's start that again. No! I'm Emily, and that is the <laughs> bell for the podcast. <laughs> and we just started recording because it is my cat's dinner time. I And what's, threw, what's funny? It threw me. It threw me because it was eight. What, what's really funny is I legitimately thought to myself before hitting record, let's make sure that we start recording before or after Bishop's food goes off. And then I just totally completely forgot within like the span of two minutes that the food was about to, to drop. And it didn't even register to me because normally it goes off so much later, but it's eight o'clock for me now because I'm in the U.S. It didn't even put two and two together because I was like, oh, we got hours and Bishop's food goes off. But no longer because you are in the United States. Yeah, I am. Not for long. Only for a few more weeks. That's why yes. I'm here for like another month, but not permanently yet. I we'll mean, time is, time is weird like that, but you are currently enjoying American Wi-Fi and mm-hmm. American Target. <laughs> oh, all the American things. Had a great Diet Coke, had some Dr. Pepper. I've eaten Ooh. Mexican food about three times. Had a Crunchwrap Supreme from Taco Bell. Oh, all the iced coffee a girl could dream of. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> so basically, Emily is living the dream. Yep. We are living the dream. Living on high for another month. And then we go back to Argentina. No, I love living in Argentina, too. Sometimes I just miss getting an iced coffee and walking around Target. So Just some, some minor creature comforts. The little things. The little things. Well, so it's been a quiet week. Oh my God. But it's been so nice that it's been quiet because we were hit for like, what? From from February 1st with Lewis's announcement that he was moving to Ferrari next year to like Saudi Arabia. We were like, it was news left, right and center. Like hourly something was happening. And we we've we've said before that that was overwhelming and it it was it has been nice that you know everybody took some time off the news also took some time off there were a couple things that we'll get into but overall i have felt a lot less like oh my god what's going to happen next it's been an hour but i was super anxious these last two weeks cuz i was like well maybe we'll do a podcast on our week off maybe we won't let's see what comes out and i'm like what's going to come out What's going to come out? I know something's going to come out because we've been hit. Boom, 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 boom. And it was like nothing. And I was like, they're just, you know, giving us a, giving us a break. How kind of Yes. And on a personal note, I hope this break extends through the weekend because I've got a little bit of stuff going on and I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle the stuff I've got going on plus news. Honestly, I hope it's a little slow until like the summer break because summer break is just going to be way too much for me. But I like talking about the news. I like talking about contracts. We know that's my favorite thing, but it's always a little bit of a break. So Yeah. Well, we don't have contract news this week, but we do have a Crashgate lawsuit update. Um, We've talked about this a little bit before, but Felipe Massa um, um, has been disputing the 2008 World Championships result due to a little thing called Crashgate, which is when Nelson Piquet Jr. intentionally crashed his car at the 2008 Singapore Grand Prix in order to give his teammate Fernando Alonso better position um and that plus a um very unfortunate pit stop incident that left Massa leaving the um the pit with uh his uh fuel hose attached to his car um basically handed Lewis Hamilton the world championship that Massa is not happy about. Um, he is confident that the court will ru- rule in his favor. He is currently suing Formula One, the FIA, and former F1 boss Bernie Eccleston um, in British court. Um, I have a lot of questions about how this is going to go, and I honestly don't know. I I can't see what he sees to this success. No. I, I don't know. 
It's not going to be successful. Yeah. I mean, maybe it will be, but I've decided it will be. I think it's, I mean, like, I get it. Things happen. It's unfortunate, but move on. Yeah, but I mean, even if they throw out the results, you know, or... Nothing happens. Yeah, what whatever, what, what he wants them them to do is basically say you know here's you know here's the championship you are the winner not lewis um but i think that what the only thing that would happen would be um they would throw out the entire singapore grand prix results which i don't think would still change the overall result i i haven't done the math on this i haven't looked at the numbers so i could be totally wrong but i i don't think like even without singapore i don't think he has enough points to to be, you know, mathematically the champion over Lewis. Right. But if you take a step back, I've noticed I say, I'm saying that all the time, like take a step back at the end of the day. I'm just like my corporate lingo just yeah. trails into the uh, podcast. But if you look at it wide lens in British court, if this is successful, it sets a precedent for any sports figure, athlete, individual team to be able to then go back and sue because they were unhappy with the result. Do you right. think they're going to open that can of worms? Absolutely not. Like, I just don't think it's realistic for them to be able to do that. Yeah, because then the next thing that happens is Lewis Hamilton's going to sue over, you know, the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Exactly. But that's but that at the same time, I don't think he would because they were even on points going into the race and Max had the tiebreaker advantage. So even if... Lewis would sue to get Abu Dhabi 2021 thrown out. Max is still the championship or the champion winner. Anyway, um, the, the, my biggest, one of my biggest questions going back to, you know, Massa's lawsuit is how are you supposed to depose Bernie Eccleston when I don't think Bernie Eccleston remembers anything that happened in 2008, let alone what happened a week ago. No, you can't. Yeah. I just, Someone got in Masa's ear and was like, hey, you can get money from this, and you should, and that's what he's doing. Yeah, and I mean, he definitely lost out on a lot of money. He had a, an almost career-ending and life-ending injury, uh, you know, a few years after that that completely derailed the rest of his, his, you know, Formula One career. So obviously, he's in this situation that is, you know, really unfortunate, and he's trying to do what he can to move you know find a way to move forward um but it i just i don't see this, this isn't the go- way. whether it's the way or not i don't see this going the way that he thinks it's going to go and it and certainly you know the you know a british court can rule whatever they want but i don't think they're gonna be like hey fia formal one you have to say that felipe moss is the world champion i just i just don't know if the british court has well, that like, type of power if it was like this big of a deal though to him why wait until 2023 to do this I don't know. Time is weird like that. I just have a lot of issues with this. Again, I think it sets a bad precedent for all of the sporting world going forward. Primarily that. So as we have said, as we have continued to cover this over, you know, months, we'll let you know when we hear more and we will have more opinions as we hear more. Maybe Um, I will eat my words, but I feel very strongly about this. Yeah, I agree. Um, other things British related. <laughs> let's just hit all of our British points here. Yeah, Little let's. Ollie. Yeah. Little Ollie. Goodness gracious. He Bless his heart. Is the tallest child I've ever seen in my life. I feel so old when I see like how young he is driving in Formula One. Right. Um, and when I hear that he is still trying to take his driver's li- as driver's license test, and he failed. Yep. I mean, as somebody who very much struggled to get her driver's license, I didn't get mine until I was 19. Um, I know that it's not easy, but the fact that he has driven one of the fastest cars on the planet and scored points with an hour's experience in the car and he failed his driver's test. Yeah. But I think it's because he like didn't yield to a red light or did see failed to do something at a red light. It wasn't like because he's a terrible driver. No, no, of course not. Which like obviously, if you blow through a red light, that's a pretty big. That's a pretty big thing. But um, I think it was for something small. It's not like he failed the entire test. But still, I think it's wild that you have a super license and you don't actually have a license to drive a street legal car. 
Yeah. I mean, the same thing was happened with Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen he, yeah. he got his road license years after he, he started driving in Formula One. Um, obviously, he didn't need a driver's license at that point because I think, you know, his dad was just driving him everywhere, Red Bull people. Um, I'm not, I don't think Yost is driving him around. I think it's someone from Red Bull. Probably. Yost doesn't strike me as, like, the carpool dad. <laughs> no, he's the leave your son at a gas station for losing dad. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Anyway, Yost has been quiet. He will be in Australia, so that means he probably will say things, and we will discuss what he said in our race recap. What are we? What are we saying yeah. after Australia? We're going to have so many stories coming out of the weekend because we. I just know it. We won't yeah. have a quiet weekend. Yeah, and I'm recording for stuff. Recording's gonna be real fun. Cannot wait. Uh, also for this weekend, Carlos signs. Yes. TBD. Big old TBD. <laughs> yes. So allegedly, he's in Australia. Well, not allegedly. He is in Australia, but he's may or may not be racing this weekend. He has to pass the medical test on Thursday with the FIA. Um, and that's all we've really heard about it. There's not a lot of word elsewise. Like, Fred has said he's an adult. He can tell us if he's okay to race or not. Like, we trust him. Fair. Which I call bullshit because he was not okay to be, like, like, he was trying to do <laughs> practice or free practices. And he, the kid is, like, dying with a insane fever and his appendix is bursting. He's like, oh, no, no. I got I'm this. good. I'm good. Like, I don't trust his judgment. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> he should not make medical decisions for himself. Oh, yeah. And then. Day after surgery. Walking exactly. Walking the paddock. Like yeah i don't think so, you can barter your way through this one carlos yeah i will also i will also add that and obviously if he's not ready ollie bearman will be back in the car um but we are recording this on tuesday um yes. which means it's currently wednesday on australia so this episode will be out and we will know um whether or not he is racing probably by the time this episode has been released because i'm sure that they'll they'll do all the the test he has to he has to do he has to execute the jump test um and that's the you know get out of the car get your um your steering wheel off put back on within that certain amount of time all of those things to make sure that he can get out of the car safely and if there is indeed you know a, a crash um so we will know probably by the time that you're listening to this episode but we're still gonna but speculate it's more on fun it. to talk about it now <laughs> because we are in the past <laughs> time travel oh man um i'm very excited for this weekend i love australia it's, it's such, such a, a fun race. And like one of the race. bummers about this is that they have decided that they're not letting fans out onto the track um, for the podium this this year because of what happened last year. Fans got out a little early and so they actually had to have a fourth red flag. And we'll talk about how much of a mess the race itself was. Um, but I, I'm this is like a quintessential Formula One like fun race. Like Monaco yeah. is a a quintessential, you know, historic, historic. Formula One race, Australia is the fun one, which yeah. makes sense. I mean, it's it's Australia. Everything doing having to do with Australia is fun. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Um, but before we get to Australia, there's something that I want to bring up because I thought it was really funny. Um, I was on the Formula One website today and I saw an article about James Vowles, our favorite team principal from Williams, who of course was one of the chief engineers at Mercedes for many, many years, including the infamous era of rivalry between Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Um, and Vowles apparently was on a podcast where he confirmed that there was a secret document featuring rules of engagement for Hamilton and Rosberg to follow to attempt to handle their rivalry. And I just think that everything about that is really funny. Yeah, because like if you have to write it down and have something, like then you know that it wasn't working and it had to be written. So yeah. it would be. I think that's hilarious. I know that we talk about well, we you and I talk about this a lot in our DMs about like the Rosberg Hamilton 
the fact yeah. that Nico Rosberg <laughs> loves to remind other. everybody at any opportunity that he beat Lewis Hamilton in equal machinery in 2016, um, which I watched every race of the 2016 season. And you can watch that episode or you can listen to that episode or watch that episode if you're on YouTube. Um, but I just that adds just another layer of hilarity to everything that you see, you know, watching the races yeah even just like watching the races doesn't give you the entire context of everything that was happening back then because here's like media reports and social media and and things like that back then so like giving this gives me more hilarious context to their rivalry it makes me think of the when they crashed into each other in spain in 2016 um which was a crazy highlight race and of course that was max verstappen's first race in red bull and his first win um I just, everything about the fact that there was a document with how they were to, you know, interact with one another within their rivalry is just hilarious to me. I feel like we're going to get to that point with like SD Bestie and Gasly. I'm sure they already have one. (laughs) Probably. Honestly, they probably have these for most people, most teammates. Yeah. It's just more dramatic because those two definitely very clearly did not like each other. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, speaking of Australia, going back to Australia, we have our home race uh, for Daniel and Oscar. And since it is their home race, they both have home race helmets that came out and they're so freaking cool. Yeah. I, I know we did our helmets and like we did our favorite helmets for the year, but Danny's might be up there in my top three now, the Australia one. Oh, I I think his Australia helmet is better than his regular helmet. His Um, regular helmet is terrible. Well, his his regular helmet is just sponsors and one honey badger. This is like completely different, and it's it's so Australia. It's got a giant. It's got kangaroos and it has a giant honey badger and flowers. And it's just like, it's, it's It's really, it's a beautifully done helmet. Oscars. I am also obsessed with like the, the blue and orange, you know, motif and in the, I, the kangaroo. I, I love all of it. A plus work. Good job. Yes. Still really excited to see Joe and use China helmet. Oh my God. It's going to be so good. I'm excited. I can't wait. We are almost there. Speaking of Joe Guanyu, he announced um, that there is a documentary that's going to be released soon. It's I think it's just going to be released in China and in Chinese, and maybe we'll be able to see it with you know subtitles. Um, called the first one, so I can only assume it's a chronicle of his journey to becoming the first Chinese Formula One driver, um, which I think is really cool. And I hope that we do have an opportunity to find some way to watch that. Yeah. Again, another plug. He won't lose a seat. Even if he's struggling, he won't lose a seat. He's too important to F1 for and brings in too much money for him to lose a seat. Yeah, well, hopefully, because I, th- I think I, I'm, I'm worried about him because he's such a good driver, but he's in a terrible car. And I th- like we have never had an opportunity to see just how good of a driver he is. So I can only hope that the amount of money that he does bring in will allow him to have an opportunity to really show off his, you know, the yeah. fact that he is he is a lot better than his results have shown because the car is terrible. Sorry, is that Sauber or is that Kick or is that uh, Steak? Which team uh, is he currently driving for? Well, this weekend it's going to be Kick because Australia's gambling laws do not allow them to promote Steak. Um, So this we've talked we've talked about this, but yes, it's Sauber. But this this race specifically is one of the races that they will be referred to as Kick rather than as Steak because of you know gambling laws vary from country to country. This is so dumb. Why would they ever do this? They did not think this through. How did this uh, no. get through so many layers of approval? Money. I understand that. But they're not even able to, do, like, they're being paid for a big sponsor. And that sponsor can't even be advertised at half, what, like, a, a handful of races. I just don't get it. It makes me so frustrated. Someone I don't know. in their sponsorship department did not thoroughly fact check everything, but no, absolutely not. It it's it's just ridiculous. Really um, 
Yeah. So before we dive in, I saw this question on social media and I wanted us to discuss it, but there's been this burning question. And I think this was, this was posted by motorsport.com um, on Instagram um, asking, should Formula One teams be obligated to drive a rookie in a race every season? Right now, Formula One teams are obligated to drive a rookie in a free pra- in the first pre- free practice session of a race, and you know for for each driver, unless you are the rookie on your team, which this year we have no rookies. Um, but should what do you think? Should teams be obligated to drive a rookie in a race? No, flat out no. Yeah, it messes with constructors. It messes with drivers' championship. Like. If they're already getting points, uh, super license points for driving in free practices, that's all they need. They're getting experience in the car. People are getting in, the, you know, film and data to look at for possible seat openings in the future. But I think having them involved in a race just ruins too much of, like, it's a it's a competitive sport. Competitive yeah. professional sport. If you start throwing rookies in just because there's a rule and out of out obligation – it takes away the opportunities for the drivers who are actually driving, who actually have a seat to earn points, to score points for the team. I think it ruins everything. It messes everything up. And I have a feeling like the F1 um, team principals would think like, oh, well, let's just, then it's like, do you all just have a throwaway race and you have like a rookie race? Well, then don't do that. Just have a separate race. That's just rookies. Right. People like, reserve drivers whatever trying to go into a race I don't know I think it's I I get the intention and the ask but I I say flat out no oh I I wholeheartedly agree with you and I knew that we would be in agreement on this my personal thing is the idea is well the cars in F1 are so different from the cars in F2 that you know free practice session is not you know a replacement for actually driving a race but that just says that F2 is not doing enough to prepare for exactly. the rookies in F1, yep. not the other way around. So what you need to fix is you need to make F2 more equitable to F1. Yep. which you need to improve F- F2 so that F1 doesn't suffer. Right. And so, and I mean, I know that there is, there is a big difference between F2 and F1. The drivers that have, you know, every year that we have new drivers moving in, they've all talked about that. But at the same time, that's the point. And you're looking, you know, teams are looking for the rookie that's going to have the best opportunity to make that transition as, you know, as quickly as possible. Or you put them in a more junior team like Williams. Yeah. And it's it's not like this is a new practice. We get rookies from F2 or other circuits all the time, see other series all the time that they jump into the car and some of them do really well. Some of them don't. Some of them just crash, but it's not like it's a practice where it used to happen. Bring it back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's that, that's also speaks to, you know, how good are the junior teams that formula one teams have the Ferrari junior team, the Mercedes junior team, the Red Bull junior team. If you're producing, you know, rookies that are not translating to the formula one level, that means that your junior team is the, you know, where you need to to fix, to find the better driver, to give them more preparation, to give them more, you know, practice time in the older cars, um, rather than trying to sacrifice a an entire race in the Formula One season, the Formula One calendar. Plus, people aren't traveling halfway around the world. Like, I'm not going to travel to, you know, Japan just to watch one of the, you know, F2, you know, like one of the Red Bull junior drivers drive in, instead of Max Verstappen at a race. I don't want that. Well, let's be real. They would never take out Max. It would be Checo, but. Um, yes, and. <laughs> but yeah, like if you want to create a better springboard and a better transition, you need, like you said, you need to make F2 better. And also, like, make your junior driving programs better like it's not on f1 to fix this problem it's on everybody else i think but if it's even a problem i don't think it's a problem i don't think it is i think it's just it 
I it, this obviously came about because Ollie Behrman came in right. with no experience and like right. what ha- what happened if he had an entire weekend to prepare, which is something that you and I talked about in our Saudi Arabia recap. But the that's not what Formula One is here for. Formula One is not here to develop new drivers. Formula One is here to showcase the pinnacle of motor racing, yeah. and the pinnacle of motor racing is. I'll challenge that a little bit and say that Alpha Tari and William, or sorry, not Alpha Tari, V Carb, Carbohydrate, V Carb, Red yeah. Bull Juniors, and Williams are there to kind of grow talent. They are. That is true. Teams. That is 100% true. The, you that's are right. The caveat. That's the caveat. Yes. But outside of that, F1 is, like you said, there to show off the pinnacle of motorsport. It's not there to, to develop. And Maybe if they aren't getting enough experience in these cars and they want them to be better when they jump into that seat, then maybe the FIA needs to change like how often rookies or other drivers can be in the current car and not cause issues and not be considered testing and stuff like that. Then do something there, but don't take a whole race away from us. Yeah, exactly. And I I will also add that, you know, Williams is in a position where they have to be a feeder team just because they had been struggling the last few decades and Mercedes, you know, is helping them continue to, you know, stay on the grid by providing them drivers like George Russell. Um, Lance Stroll was a Williams driver who was, you know, in, in, in training before his father bought a team, things like that. Um, so, but these are also, you know, the, the junior teams are still, these are the best of the best right. of those junior drivers. Obviously yeah. Nick DeVries is a aberration and a very awkward aberration. Um, but I mean, we would be having the same conversation if this was like Liam Lawson, who was coming in as a super sub again. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And I still think that you can't make a driver not race just to give a rookie more experience. No, this isn't like participation ribbon league here. Yeah. Like you earn your seat or someone gets appendicitis. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, appendicitis is more common than you think on the F1 grid. I mean, we've had two drivers. Well, do in we three even have years. drivers with appendix appendices left? My God. I mean, who knows? I mean, does Fernando Alonso still have an appendix? Did we oh miss gosh. out on his appendicitis? I have loved all of the. Fernando is old content that's coming out. It is just so good. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. We we love that he's here. I was looking at some some records and from his first entry to his current entry, it has been more than 8,000 days of existence of time and like that like I can't even conceptualize 8,000 days. No. That's so many. I love him and I love his long storied career and I love that he has been racing <laughs> longer than Ollie, Ollie Behrman's been alive. Been alive. Yeah, I, so. I love it. Um, and then moving into last season's Australia race, he finished third behind Lewis yeah. Hamilton and of course Max Verstappen. Um, but this race was one of the hottest of hot messes that we have seen in a while. And I loved every second of it. I love oh, yeah. a good clean race and I love just racing I love it you know I do like a safety car here and there to kind of reset um (laughs) but Australia 2023 holy hell this was a disaster eight DNFs three red flags four red flags if we want to be technical but three in the actual race three red flags like this is when the Alpines took each other out when they were the points oh my god it was such a nightmare yeah, Carlos hit Fernando, Nick DeVries and Logan Sargent ended up beached in gravel, Lance Stroll also ended up in the gravel on the restart, um, and this was a 58-lap race, so we were all set and ready for an epic three-lap shootout on lap oh. 55, um, but there was a controversy because they started on a rolling start instead of a standing start, which played into Red Bull strategy hands, but then everybody kept crashing into each other, so they had to red flag the race again um and th- at this point nico hulkenberg in the haas was at p4 but they stepped it back to basically the same start order minus the cars that had crashed into each other um and the reasoning was that it was deemed that the drivers had or the lead driver max at the time had not finished a full sector 
before that third and final the, uh, third red flag. So it could not be determined officially what the the standings were. Yeah. So they're like, never mind. Sorry, Nico Hulkenberg, but you're gonna have to go back to. I don't remember where he was, but it was definitely not P4. And we all wanted him to be P4. We, he almost had a podium. We just yeah, want that for he'll him. Never, he'll never get it. It'll always be taken away. I know. It's Poor it's guy. very unfortunate. He'll never end up in a podium. He, ha- he just has so much potential, but he's just been such mediocre cars. But every, everything about that race was just comp- – like, I was so excited for the three-lap shootout. And then we didn't get a three-lap shootout. We got yeah. – I was excited about that, too. Yeah, we we got a a one lap kind of pseudo parade of 12 cars that really didn't do much. And I don't know, it was exciting that Fernando got another podium because, you know, that was when Aston Martin was on their hot streak and McLaren was still down in the dumps. But it was just that that race was such a hot mess. It was. It was. You can only wonder what's going to happen this weekend. Oh, my gosh. To our predictions. Yep. So, again, for those of you new here, for those of you who have forgotten or maybe haven't quite gotten to this portion of our podcast before, (laughs) uh, Catherine and I predict each race. We pick pole, we pick our podium, we pick P10, and we assign ourselves points if we get them right or not. So it's one point per pole, five points per podium, three points for P10. For podium, you have to get the full podium in the correct order. In order to get any points. If you miss one, flip-flop some, doesn't count. Um, Catherine was perfect last week. um, And I am struggling with this. Um, But that's okay. I didn't know, you know, Carlos was going to have appendicitis and not race. We No. Whoops. So, But (laughs) with that being said, we still don't know if he's going to race. And we still don't know if it's Ollie. So only time will tell. Um, yeah, we do make these predictions very far in advance, so it is kind of hard to tell where things are going to shake out, but it's still fun anyways. So, Catherine, with that being said, who is your poll for the weekend? Uh, for the third race in a row, I'm going with Max Verstappen. Oh, I know. Part of me is like, it's such a solid get for one point, because most likely Max is going to get the podium most likely he's going to win but I'm gonna throw a curveball and I'm gonna say it's going to be the old Charles Leclerc pull master staff and win <laughs> weekend <laughs> yeah I I it's it's not that I'm you know p- picking Max repeatedly for pole because I think Max is gonna you know win every single race this year it's just I haven't seen a car yet that has been able to you know really compete with Max for pole obviously you know Charles, Charles is, is cute last- his his Q two time would have would have beat his 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 Q three time, but it's all I'm I'm s- together. I understand. Yeah, I'm I'm still I'm still going with Max on this one. All right, and I'm going Charles, so we will see. So we we shall see. I will say my podium. I would love to put Carlos up there, but I don't know if he's racing. So that was a yeah. little hard. My podium is just I don't know. I, I'm so worried because Australia is always a nightmare and people always mm-hmm. DNF and there's always madness and craziness. So this is really hard for me. And did I just delete my... Nope, I did not. Okay. thought I deleted my predictions. Um, so for podium, I have Max, Charles, Checo. Okay. Oh, I don't like it, but it is what it is. What about you? I know you have Max winning. Okay, so I'm going to throw a little curveball on here. I'm I'm going Max Checo Oscar Piastri. Okay, see I wanted to pick Oscar so bad because it's his home race. But I just haven't seen enough out of him to put him on the podium yet. So I I know, so I'm going with a little bit of delusion and a little bit of there's going to be some chaos and hopefully as a home driver he will be able to overcome that chaos and stay on track. I don't care where you're from. You can't overcome the chaos of Australia. I mean, that is true. <laughs> All right. So for P10, Catherine and I pick P10. It's the last position on the grid where you earn points. You get one point for P10. We give ourselves three because it's a very hard position to pick. Catherine, who is your P10 for Australia? 
Well, I think that my P10, I'm not going to get it. Um, so I will be, I'm, I think I'm leaving three points on the board. Um, this is a little bit just vibes and a little bit delusional hope and a prayer, but I hope that Danny Ricardo Danny, does I not have it. a terrible I know. weekend. I know. I know. Um, and so I am picking Daniel for my P10. Well, let's just say this. Last year we had eight DNFs, so there were only 12 drivers. So if he can be, you know, if things mirror last year and he can be better than two other drivers, then maybe he will get P10. Yeah. I think he's struggling a little bit. I think he's going through a rut. Maybe some time at home will be good for him. Um, yeah. I have Lewis Hamilton. Ooh, a bold choice. I know. It's either like he's going to be on the podium or he's going to be like P9, P10. I feel like there's right? no middle of the ground or middle of the road for him. So, um, yeah. So This has just been such a weird start. to. The, and I, I know that they have like fundamental issues with the car that they're dealing with. And I think like we kind of got a preview of that, of that picture of uh, the pixelated picture of Lewis in the car the day before he announced that he was going to be moving to Ferrari. But yeah. I, I just... I am a little bit surprised at at Mercedes' lack of performance, and and I mean, I mean I'm not, <laughs> but I don't know. I did say last year that I they started to like really make some movements towards the end of the year, um, but then they scrapped their car and they started over from scratch, and I just don't know if they're still moving in an upward direction. Yeah, they they definitely tend to to pull in in later in, in the year, but usually we're also a lot more used to Mercedes having dominant starts as well. So I'm just yeah. this is I want to say it's uncharacteristic, but this is also what we've been seeing for the last three years. Yeah. So I'm just like, is this the new what's, norm of Mercedes? Is is this their new normal? Awkward. Not if Toto I mean, has anything to say about it. <laughs> I, and Toto just signed a three-year contract to stay on as as team principal and and head man in charge. So I, I don't think that he's going to want to stick around for another three years of this misery, especially going into the next regulation. Yeah, I don't know. Speaking of Lewis Hamilton, going off track here, have you seen that he's started to like sneakily sign Ferrari gear? Yes, I have. And he's like signs it, and he's like. <laughs> 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 I'm glad he's excited about this and I'm glad that he's having fun with it. I think he's, I think it's going to, again, every single episode without fail, we will talk about Lewis Hamilton and Ferrari. Um, I hate myself, but I think he's just ready to kind of do what Alonzo did and like have a, some good years in your last, in the end of your career. I don't think he was having fun anymore at Mercedes. I think it's been super stressful. Mm -hmm. I think he's excited to like, you know, fulfill a dream of driving for Ferrari. And I don't care what anyone says. Every F1 driver grows up wanting to drive for Ferrari because it's Ferrari. Yeah. And my personal opinion. And so I think he's just going to be like, you know what? We're going to coast through, have a few good years, have some fun, maybe fix their di diversity problems a little bit. And, you know, see what happens. I think he's going in it to have some fun. But that's just, you know. Yeah. And I, th I think that... Fun. That whether whether he actually comes out and says this or not, I think that he's taking a little bit out of Valtteri Bottas's book of like, yeah. I'm just here to have fun. And obviously yeah. Valtteri Bottas is an honorary Australian, so this is basically a home race for him too. My he's favorite thing poster. is every poster, every poster, poster. every bill. I, I love like Formula One on their Instagram. They, they, they posted their Australia poster and it was Oscar, Daniel, Valtteri, and Charles for some reason. And who knows? It's like, and, but why wouldn't you put Max? Because he's the reigning world champion. Like, it would make right. sense to put him on there. But no, it's Valtteri and Charles. Yeah. I mean, Valtteri is basically Australian. Like, Charles at, makes so sense. at some point, they're going to give him citizenship, whether he marries into it or they just give it to him because he's hanging around so long. And for those of you who don't know, his partner is an Australian cyclist. So that's yes. where his love of Australia comes from. Um, and also just, like, he is... Australia um but I yeah but I think that he's taking a little bit of like Lu I mean he and I mean Lewis is taking a little bit of a page out of, of Valtteri's book of just like he's gonna have some fun he's not gonna say that he's having fun just driving in a car that isn't doing very well but he's on a grid and that's where he wants to be yeah and that's enough and maybe not completely enough because he obviously wants that eighth world championship, but he's going to learn to live with it this year and hope that Ferrari can give him a better car and hopefully also a good strategy. God, I can't wait to watch Charles and Lewis just battle it out. Oh my God. How many, how many double DNFs is Ferrari going to have next year? 
I That's think they enough. they they might have some number. It's uh, they're they're gonna be some awkward moments oh. of like let him through versus let him through. Um, so I'm I'm actually kind of excited to see that. Maybe Carlos won't actually go into a seat and he'll just become strategist next to. <laughs> Absolutely not. Though they did say did speaking you hear of, he was like helping Ollie Behrman like with the race. Did you hear this? Let that man rest. Oh my he god! Was looking at data and like looking at da- like different data points and stuff, and like feeding his thoughts to the engineer to then tell Ollie and it like oh my like what strategy to go with and how to do certain things and change setup or whatever. But I don't know if that's actually true. I was reading an article and Ollie was saying that, so I'm gonna take it as it is true. But it's like I mean, why not? He's so great. How can person. how can Carlos like even as the the noted Red Bull fan of the podcast? How can Carlos Sainz not be one of your favorite drivers on the grid? Like I just don't understand how how that would work. Oh, I don't know, but anyways, to get us back on track for our predictions, um, yes. Catherine, what is your biggest? What would be your vision for biggest surprise of Australia? So going alongside my P10 pick, my biggest surprise for Australia would be that. RB V Carb, uh, Team Carbohydrate, Team Visa Cash App has a good weekend. Um, I don't necessarily think that both drivers would end up in the points. I'm hoping that it's you know I hope that Daniel will, but I hope that he and Yuki both have a good weekend and that the the team starts making some progress moving forward. Yeah, I love that. We love Danny. Yes. So my biggest surprise is kind of twofold because if ollie (laughs) drives biggest surprise would be he gets in the points again Mm -hmm. i think a rookie who has literally no experience besides one grand prix race being thrown in the car all of this unknown if he gets in the points two weekends in a row that's insanity yeah and i think that'd be a huge surprise if he does not race my biggest surprise would be that we have a clean race in Australia. We all know okay. that's not going to happen. But yeah. It's a big surprise. But yeah, I think that those are my, because I, it's like, I want him to get in the points. That'd be a huge shock for him to get points two weekends in a row. Oh yeah. But like if he's not racing, that's a mute point. So if he's not racing, then my biggest surprise would be a clean race. I think or it would take a miracle for there to be a clean and race. A clean race. You never honestly if it's a clean race and I call that I think I get like 100 points there should be a bonus <laughs> yes but no <laughs> if if I can't get guys on the podium in the wrong order then you don't get points for that that's fine I'll give you that so um do a dumb who's your who's your who is going to do a dumb in Australia this weekend this one was hard for me because it's so easy to just be like oh Alpine's gonna be Alpine <laughs> Um, but I didn't want to do that because obviously we know that Alpine is going to have some problems. Hopefully they don't crash into each other like they did last year. Um, but I, I just think that Mercedes is going to continue riding the struggle bus. And if Lewis ends up in P10, that will kind of confirm. Yes. Speaking of P10, I unfortunately have Daniel Ricciardo. Um, I just think he's been struggling this season so far, it's the home race. There's always more pressure. Um, I obviously don't want that. I want him to do really well and have a have a turn this weekend, but I just think it's going to be too much and it's going to get to him and, and he's not. I don't want to say DNF, but I don't think he's going to perform well. Yeah. I mean, obviously the last driver who had a home race um, was Sergio Perez last season in Mexico, um, and that did not go well for him at all. Um, so hopefully he this... didn't even make it to the first corner <laughs> no he did not he 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 tried to send it I mean I we we talked about this in the recap but I respect what he tried obviously it didn't work and it was very unfortunate that he didn't but he he tried to send it and you know hopefully Danny Doesn't. has the, the good weekend yeah so we'll see but all in all I'm very excited for Australia this is one of my favorite races there's always a lot of action it's really exciting it will actually be at a better time for me now because I think it's mm-hmm. 11 p.m. on Saturday versus like four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning back in yeah. Argentina. So very excited about that. Um, yeah. And it's the first race I get to actually watch in America on TV and not in a car. 
watch with my dad. So yeah. Get to answer all the uh, dad commentary questions, which is so good. Yeah. I, I think that I, I'm really excited, to, you know, like we said at the beginning of the episode that, you know, it was very nice to have a break from nonstop back to back to back news, but I am excited to have, you know, to, to get the drivers back on the grid and actually watch another race. Cause you know, that's the whole point of this is we're, we're here to watch the racing and also but the are outside we, drama. Aren't we here to, you know, see what Jos Verstappen says in the paddock? God, I hope he doesn't say anything. I, I, I just like, can they just like put some like duct tape over his mouth and just like, he can just like be there and watch his son win the race again. I don't think anyone would dare do that because I think they'd be afraid of what he'd do if he I mean probably his mouth to shut. Yeah. Again, if also, any of you don't know these wild, crazy stories about Yosef Verstappen. Just Google them; you'll see all of them. Because we can't. Yeah. Even... That would take an entire <laughs> episode. Maybe we'll do that one day. Um, but speaking of part one, part two. Speaking of the Verstappens, Max is going for his 10th consecutive victory for the second time in his career and the second time in two seasons, um, which would be his own Formula One record. I didn't put a Max Verstappen record watch bit in this um, segment, in this in this episode, because I forgot. Uh, but Max is, is, is going for, for another win number 10. Um, so that's that a lot of fun, races. Is that your fun fact? Or do we no, that is, fun that is not my fun fact. My, my actual fun fact. What is fact Catherine's F1 fun fact of the episode? Is um, no Australian driver has ever won the Australian Grand Prix unless you count Valtteri Botas as an Australian driver. No. Which in this case, what we do shame. not. What a shame. Yeah. Yeah, there have, there, there have not been very many um australian drivers i don't remember off the top of my head what that number is but none of them have ever won their home race hmm. well yeah my money's on oscar if anyone's going to yeah maybe in a few years i don't think this year's his year but no i i don't think the mclaren is is uh done marinating yet the the mclaren has work honestly i think that i'm only gonna get my podium if there's like chaos like max and checo have like gone off and they're like 40 seconds ahead of the grid and then everyone just crashing into each other behind woof well yeah there we go australian grand prix is coming up very excited so coming up next we will have our australia grand prix race recap episode which will probably come out on Monday, TBD. We're working with some, some things are marinating. <laughs> so, Wait. but that is our yeah. next episode and we will have that out to you guys sometime early next week. Um, but yeah, very excited for this race. So yeah. that has been the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us guys.